What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I just returned from exploring the incredible island of Corsica and I want to share with you my favorite places and experiences. So here's my Corsica top 10. Located in the Mediterranean above Sardinia, Corsica is easily one of Europe's most beautiful and diverse islands. From the perfect beaches of Palombagia to the granite peaks of Bovella, Corsica has so much to offer. Let's start this video off at Bonifacio. Located in the very south of Corsica, Bonifacio is one of the most unique cities I've ever been to. It's this medieval commune that's built right on these white limestone cliffs that are over 70 meters high. A lot of the limestone has eroded and some of the buildings are built on an overhang. I mean, it looks like they're gonna fall straight into the sea. The Bonifacio that you see today was founded around 900 AD when the citadel was built by the Duke of Tuscany. Now today, Bonifacio is an impressive town. I really enjoyed walking around the harbor. It was full of boats and it was really nice to take a stroll on the boardwalk. Now if you want to reach the main part of Bonifacio, it's a decent uphill walk. When we got there, we went on this path on the nearby cliffs and were able to get a great view of the overhang and citadel. The old town was really enjoyable to walk through. You definitely feel like you're taking a stroll back in time. There was also some great viewpoints to see the surrounding scenery. While we were walking around the town, we came across the staircase of the King of Aragon. It's a steep stairway built straight into the cliffs and allows you to go down to the sea. It cost about 6 euros to do it and they gave us some helmets. When you reach the bottom, you can continue walking on the pathway. The views of the Mediterranean combined with the cliffs of Bonifacio are amazing. If you stay around for sunset, you can drive up to the nearby cliffs east of Bonifacio and get a spectacular view of the village as the sun lights it up with the orange glow and slowly descends over the horizon. Afterwards, we're going to visit the nearby St. Anthony Beach. This is probably my favorite beach in all of Corsica and one of the main reasons I wanted to come here. To get to the beach, it's about a short 10 minute drive from Bonifacio and then from there you'll make a 30 minute hike with the last part descending down to the beach. When we reached it, I was just so stoked. The massive rock that dominates the beach is so incredible. I mean, I went here twice. One day the beach was super calm and the other time it had some decent waves. The water was so warm to swim in and the clarity was amazing. While I was there, I noticed this cave in the rock. So I swam over to it to check it out. To my surprise, the cave was actually a tunnel and it connected to the other side. I mean, I felt like Indiana Jones finding a secret tunnel. I mean, it's so freaking cool. My only regret was not continuing to swim on the other side. I always get sketched out swimming alone in the ocean. Anyways, after, instead of swimming, we walked over to the other side and we found this grotto that's only accessible by the sea. Next time, I definitely want to swim into it. We had such a great time at St. Anthony Beach. The combination of crystal clear waters, green vegetation, and the white rocks is unmatched. I love this beach so much. After it, we're going to visit Palombagia. Now, if you enjoy calm waters and pristine beaches, Palombagia is your place. It's located on the southeastern coast, about 40 minutes from Bonifacio. Now, when you think of the Mediterranean, this is it. It's such an ideal location, home to some world-class beaches. One of my favorite features of Palombagia was its distinct pine trees that line the coast. I also loved all these rocks in the sea. It reminded me of the Seychelles. Now, while we were here, we found a really nice secluded beach and spent the sunrise there. Afterwards, we went to another one called Plag de Ajaju, and it was this picturesque cove with water that was like glass, and it was a perfect place to spend that early afternoon. Another nearby beach is Santa Julia. It's a scenic cove with a beach that's situated between this lake and the crystal clear Tyranian Sea. I mean, I couldn't believe the watercolor, and it also had this really cool group of rocks that people were paddleboarding and swimming out to. Definitely a great beach to enjoy a nice afternoon at. Now afterwards, we're going to leave the coast to venture into Corsica's mountains. Corsica may be famous for its beaches, but it's also home to some of the most incredible mountains in Europe. You can reach some really impressive places in the mountains about an hour's drive from Bonifacio. A cool place we passed through was Lac de l'Hospital. It's this reservoir built high in the mountains. Nearby is the Cascade de Piscia de Gallo. It's the tallest waterfall in Corsica, and it can be reached by doing about a 5 kilometer hike. One of my favorite places in Corsica's mountains was the Aiguille de Bavella. Aiguille is the French word for needles, and after seeing those mountains, I totally understand why it's called that. The area is full of these jagged granite rocks that make up for some of the most beautiful mountains I've ever seen. From the village of Bavella, you can walk around and marvel at the mountains. I was also fascinated by the trees up here. They were so unique looking and created for the most epic landscape combination. There is some climbing and hiking trails that you can go on that connect to the GR20, which is this insane trail that goes across Corsica's island. Next time I'm there, I definitely love to go on them and get a closer perspective of the Aguiz de Bavella. 
While we're still in the mountains, we're going to head to the north to visit the Rostonica Valley. Located about 30 minutes outside the city of Corte, the Rostonica Valley is a scenic spot dominated by mountains on both sides. I mean, I couldn't believe the scale of this place. At the top, there was a parking lot and little restaurant, and from there you can make a hike to two lakes. The first is Lac de Melo, and from there you can continue to Lac de Capitello. There are truly some incredible alpine lakes. If you do go to them, expect to take anywhere from 4 to 5 hours to make the round trip trek. Afterwards, we're going to head back to the coast to visit Le Rousse. Now, located about an hour's drive from Corte, Le Rousse is this town on the coast that was founded in 1758 to create a new port that wasn't controlled by the Genoese. Now, my favorite feature of Le Rousse is the islands that are connected to the mainland by a road. We drove out onto it and then walked around on them. There's this really cool lighthouse, but it was temporarily closed. The weather was a little gloomy while I was here, but if you come around for sunset on a clear day, it looks spectacular. Afterwards, we're going to visit Calvi. Located about 30 minutes from Le Rousse, Calvi is a picturesque town on Corsica's northwestern coast. Its main feature is the massive citadel that dominates the town. The fortress was founded around the 13th century, and Calvi also claims to be the birthplace of Christopher Columbus, as it was once part of the Genoese Empire, although most historians believe he was born in Genoa. Anyways, while we were here, I had a great time walking around Calvi's fortress. The architecture was very impressive, and I definitely would have felt protected here during medieval times. Now afterwards, we're going to head to Corsica's capital, Ajaccio. Located on the western coast of Corsica, Ajaccio is a fascinating city full of history and surrounding beauty. During medieval times, Ajaccio was in decline until the Genoese decided to rebuild a new city towards the end of the 15th century. Today, Ajaccio is the biggest city on the island with over 90,000 inhabitants. Now, another interesting fact about Ajaccio is that it is where Napoleon Bonaparte was born in 1769. One really cool place located about 30 minutes outside of Ajaccio is the Parata Tower. It's this massive Genoese tower that offers incredible view of the nearby islands. It's a perfect place to go to watch the sunset. Afterwards, we're going to take a drive on the Calanc de Piana. Located about an hour and a half from Ajaccio, the Calanc de Piana is this incredible area on the coast home to distinct red cliffs and rock formations. There's this incredibly picturesque road that winds through the rocks, and it's a little tight at times, but 100% worth the drive. I enjoyed walking around and marveling at the views, I mean the rocks were so unique and beautiful there. If you continue driving on the road, you'll reach the town of Porto. The main reason I wanted to go here was to visit the Genoese Tower. I mean, it looks so epic with the waves slamming into the rock with the mountains in the back. You can visit the tower for about 2.5 euros. Nearby, you can also visit the Scandola Nature Reserve. It can only be accessed by boat with tours departing from places like Porto or Calvi. The nature is unmatched there and it's definitely worth checking out. For our final destination, we're going to visit the Torre di Turgu. As you probably know from this video, there is no shortage of Genoese watchtowers in Corsica, and this one is probably my favorite. To reach it, it's a long hike, but 100% worth it. We got to the Capo Rosso parking lot and started the 8km round trip trek to the tower. The hike starts off with a nice descent, but as you approach the tower, it's a decent scramble up the Rocky Mountain. When we reached the tower, I was just impressed by how big it was and just the fact that they were able to build this back in medieval times. There was a whiny stair on the outside and then another stairway inside to reach the top. I mean, the views up there were spectacular. It was a 360 panorama, perfect for spotting incoming pirates and enemies back in the day. I mean, we spent the sunset up there and it was the perfect way to end our time on this magnificent island. Well that is it for my Corsica top 10, there's still so much of the island that I wasn't able to cover in this video, so I gotta make a part 2. Let me know where your favorite place is in Corsica in the comments below. I also have a second channel where I make relaxation films to bring some peace and nature in your life. I made a video on Corsica that I think you'll enjoy. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan and we will see you later.